welcome to another episode of Tactics Time. My name is Dennis LaRue. I'm going to be your instructor tonight. Uh, we have been focusing on basic tactical ideas using older games, and tonight we're going to focus on something that uh, definitely has practical value, but definitely has a lot of aesthetic value. Uh, if you look up basic mating patterns or books on basic mating patterns, uh, this will definitely get well, tonight's subject would definitely get categorized as a picturesque mate as opposed to like a common mate. Um, that being said, smothered mate is the topic of tonight's lecture. So we're going to start with some simple illustrations of the theme and then we'll look at some games that contain some cool or pretty looking smothered mates. Okay. A real tough one here with black to move. Real tough. Real tough. All right. See everyone here. Everyone's struggling with it, so I'm just going to say the answer. Um, <laughs> Knight F2 mate. One of the most probably most cut and dry uh, illustrations of the theme of tonight's lecture: a smothered mate. And we're going to use this simple, this simple illustration, kind of build on it, um, to understand some of the key elements to look for when we're trying to generate any kind of mating attack, uh, but specifically this one. Um, so a few things that we want to note, typically, are that the king is in the corner, and the h2 and f F2 squares are typically going to be poorly defended or undefended. Um, let's complicate this a little, a little more and get a better idea of what I'm getting at. So we have a similar position here where I added one more piece I, for white, put a rook on F1, defending that F2 square, which in the original puzzle, black delivered the smothered mate on. But I also gave black some extra firepower. We have this nice queen and bishop battery on the dark squares on the g1 a7 diagonal. And before I ask the audience to find the forced mate in two here, we're going to stick to the plan and just point out some of the features in the position that we're going to be trying to identify ahead of time as we look at some of the games. Um, so depending on which side is defending and which side is attacking, these h2 and these h and f pawns um, on h2 and h7, f2 and f7 respectively, um, are typical targets in all types of mating attacks. Uh, but especially with the smothered theme, you'll see them play large roles. And two other features are the king in the corner, and the poorly defended back rank. So now that that's all pointed out, and these are features in the defending position that you know will kind of clue the attacker in that there might there might be a smothered mate combo in, in the works. Uh, and then after we solve the puzzle, we'll kind of point out some of the common themes that the attacker has to be aware of. So. Help me out here. What do we got? Shout it out. If you see the answer, shout it out, Ken West. But let's hear it. Yeah. Queen takes g1, rook takes g1, knight 2, f2, mate. Beautiful. OK. So as club favorite GM Ken West so skillfully pointed out, we start with a common theme that we see in a lot of these smothered mate combinations, a queen sacrifice. A forcing move. Note that white is not legally allowed to recapture on g1 because of the bishop protecting the queen. Rook takes g1, legal capture, allowing this pretty looking smothered mate. Before I die. Okay, so super simple. How fast? How fast are we? Right here, right? Yeah. Yep, so 
you do know what smothered mate is now. All right, so smothered weight is just a mate delivered by the knight in which the king has no flight squares. Okay, as we can see, he's got no flight squares here. He's out of luck. There's another, another smothered mate that comes from an opening trap um, out of the Carol Con. So for those of you who play the Carol Con, if you're not already familiar with this idea, you might just want to take note of this. How about here? Can you find a similar idea? Anyone in the room? Shout it out. 96. So similar idea. But we have another tactical motif work, working its way into this, this example, that of the pin. The pawn obviously cannot recapture because it, it's pinned by the pawn. It's pinned by the queen on e2. Now, chess theorists and historians over time have attributed names uh, to some of these techniques of achieving the smothered mate, and they're usually attributed to the first recorded examples of, th of this type of mate. This one is labeled Damianos, who he also has his name attached to a few other mating ideas, but this is his Damianos smothered mate. And this is uh, white to move here. How are we going to achieve our theme? You see it. You, yep, yeah, easy. How about let's give the, the youngster just a chance to work it out here. Take your time, yeah. yeah. But and the big hint is they're all going to be the mate, the checkmate, the final move is always going to kind of look the same. All right, hit me. Let's, uh, let's hear it. Uh, Yep, queen x the pawn. Well said. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't do... That's, you, do, you did better than most. Yeah, you did good. Yeah. Queen takes. Yep. Forcing move, right? Then knight as strategy. Wonderful. Another smothered me, right? Yeah. Yep. Some were incredulous that I intended on doing a, an entire lecture on this one mating pattern, um, especially one that you don't see a lot, but... I think it has a lot of valuable, uh, there's a lot of value to studying this idea. Um, and all the, sim the simple mating ideas, even if we don't see them in our games, uh, they force us to practice that concrete calculation. Um, so this one's a little tougher. You can either practice your, mem your memory if you read the notation or uh, practice your calculation here. This one's Longer. Uh, this one's a forced mate in like five or seven. Um, and this one they attribute to Lucena, who also has some end game ideas attributed to him, right? So, how do you want to start this off with forcing moves? Yeah, you can shout it out if you want, or you can raise your hand either way. Yeah. E6. Okay. So here, on this one, we're going to move the pieces, but I want you to get familiar with these themes. So if he comes here, what, what will you play with white? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. You made him. It's okay. Yeah, made him. All right. Just checkmate him right there. Very good. Actually, knight to e7 makes it also. Very nice. A little bit prettier, too, even. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He wants to be a little more stubborn. So he runs to the corner. OK. And here, I just want to point out that we're going to be encountering tactical teams that we've already covered, namely the discovered attack and the idea of the weak back rank. All right. So knight move or queen move? Go ahead. Uh, I'll be real first. Knight right? of seven check. King G8, and here's the critical one, which yeah may give you trouble here, but as we, you're going to see it crop up in the games to come, so I'm sure you'll be shouting it out confidently. But it's like force mate in four, three, four. Okay, well let's talk it out. So the young man just yeah, yeah. yeah. Knight h6, but you don't think it's right. Yeah, but so sometimes we got to 
we have to break free of the shackles of dogmatism, right? We're, we're told not to hang pieces. And I'd say most of the time, that's a great rule. <laughs> a great rule. Um, dogma is a useful thing at times, but at times it's a hindrance. Um, and there are times when... Yeah, no, yeah. Breaking the rule leads to great rewards at times. Again, same idea. If he moves toward the center, he's going to get mated on F7, right? Forced into the corner. Now the other slightly tricky element, um, but common and recurring theme in the smothered, smothered mate motif is a sacrifice. Got to give stuff up. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Wonderful. All right, now that we're familiar with the key themes, let's see them applied in real life. Going all the way back, though, to a Giacchino Greco game. You just want me to say it that way again. I promised Jonathan I would say, Giacchini Greco. I think that, so there you go. The opponent was so embarrassed that he refused to allow allow his name to be recorded. No, I don't know what happens there, but uh, the notorious NN. He's a he's get he's been all over the world for hundreds of years. Yeah, who who is this guy? That's my name tag for the club. Says NN. Um, yeah, NN played Greco back in 1620, and he beat him. No, that would be. <laughs> That would be funny. Um, so like a lot of these games, and it's always interesting to note that you know, these moves at least still get played all the way up to the top level. So worth learning all the ideas that come around, that come out of the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. Um, bishop c4, leading into one of Mike Cummer's favorite lines, if knight f6 is played, but it's not, get into the piano. Joko piano. And here, the F2 pawn is undefended. It is undefended. And as we noted earlier, weak H pawns, weak H2 and F2 pawns, or H7 and F7 pawns, are the telltale signs that there's a mating attack in there somewhere. You're raising your hand? Yeah. But here he just castles. Uh, following guidelines that we've kind of been focusing on and trying to keep as recurring themes in, in this uh, series, uh, uh, which are rapid development, control of the center, and castling early, things that we should always be mindful of, uh, no matter our rating strength or, or experience. Following a typical plan for white in this position, breaking in the center, getting that nice, healthy, strong pawn center, Black contests it. And here, the, the engine eval was roughly equal. And even after the next move, it still is. But what would you guys play here with white? Pawn takes. Pawn takes. Yeah. Grand masterly answer. Yeah, um, yeah. no, I, I think that's right. That's what I would play. Uh, but this was hundreds of years ago, half a millennium ago. Uh, so yeah, they didn't know what we know, and he, he overextends his center and plays just unjustifiably ag aggressively with uh, e5 here, driving the knight to the very square that he wanted to go to. Okay, kind of cluing, cluing us in. So now we already have one of our, one of our guys in place for, for the, the attacking theme of the day. All right. wrongly capturing here. Now he thinks that black can't recapture, which as I just spoiled for you guys, we know that he can. Um, who in the, in the audience can identify why? What have I stopped you at, what have I said after knight takes, after black moves knight takes d4, 
white recaptures on d4? What if instead of recapturing with the bishop, we just play the queen to h4 immediately? Does that look scary for white, you think? Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so it should look scary. Um, as the diagram is illustrating here, uh, we have these themes that were pointed out in the earlier examples, the weak h2 and the weak f2 square lighting up here. So we, we want to follow through on our plan of deflecting the key defender of those squares, which was the knight f3. We deflected him by sacrificing our knight temporarily so that we can play a move like queen h4, which is what you were, rec what you were recommending. Um, but it's worth thinking about, because you went that you went for all the forcing moves, right? All the exchanges, but yeah, slow down a little bit and consider, yeah, sometimes we can bring another attacker into the mix without having to give up our, our nice attacking bishop here. Um, what is black threatening here? Should be obvious, but yeah, let's just point out the obvious to, to kill time for fun. Queen F2 and Queen H2 all under fire here. Uh, how would you defend as white? If you were found yourself in the unfortunate position of defending this with white pieces, what would you play? H3. H3, Ken West, and, and uh, what about a queen, queen F2 and king, to H1. king H1? Yeah, it's a crazy, yeah, but you, you do survive at least for a moment. Yeah. Not long. Not long. Not long. Um, but we'll, let's, let's, just for curiosity's sake, let's take a look at that and see if we can't. Uh, identify what, what doesn't work about that um, without using the engine. Yeah. Oh, you're just losing the knight here is all that's happening. Um, so the knight, after the check, we brought a second attacker against d4. So after he moves, we can just scoop up that free bishop, or that free knight, rather, with the bishop. Um, probably one reason why h3 doesn't work. There may be something more forcing I'm missing in there. Uh, but one reasonable defense here is bishop e3. And almost everything else loses in some horrible and embarrassing way. Um, but bishop e3, after some crazy defensive moves, you can find yourself with equality with white pieces. Uh, Defending difficult positions is not the topic of today's lecture. It's about identifying a smothered mate and concretely calculating three to four move combos involving that. So we're going to skip past all that. And look at the horrible move that was actually played in the game. Again, we'll give him a break. It was over 500 years ago. Um, but he thought it was right to attack the queen here. Greco, being the smart guy that he was, Knew that there was a recipe for a smothered mate in here. Without moving the pieces all the way down to the to the very to the bitter end. What is it? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Read out as many moves as you can before I. Bo okay. Okay. And then and then mate on. Okay, yep. Seems pretty routine and it's easy, pretty easy to spot now, right? So let's look at five more games with the same example and same type of theme. Okay, so we're going to speed through the opening a lot of the, in a lot of these because I have a lot of games here. Um, and honestly, a lot of the, sometimes the opening play is pretty dubious, uh, as is the case here. Right, it's, I mean, yep, getting, getting laughs out of, out of Ken West over there. It's a la it's games. laughable chest saying, yep, yeah, I, I, I would have to group myself in there with you, sir. Um, black might have advantage here. Um, but white could hold on if he didn't neglect development as much as he does in the game. Uh, and he makes a mistake common to 
many newcomers to the game, beginners and intermediate players. Um, all of us are, are prone to this kind of, this worrying about holding on to our material at the expense of developing. Uh, so he wants to protect his F5 pawn when there's a strong argument for just letting go of the pawn and playing moves like knight c3 and the d pawn up uh, and worrying about king safety and, and getting your miners out so they, they can aid you in that, in that objective. Um, Black also objects, uh, neglects development. Remember the engine wanted something like knight c6 right here. Uh, but he plays like, you know, I, I would probably play like this in a, in a blitz game, definitely. You just want to rip it open, it looks scary. Um, but the computer will just say it's roughly equal here. H3, defending. Yeah, speak up if you have any questions over there. Yeah, not, not too good. And, you know, the, it's the fun and the boring thing about looking at games from this era is that it's always the, the play is suspect <laughs> on both sides. And r despite that fact, one, it's just one suspicious player usually just crushing another. I'm not calling Greco suspicious, though. But uh, say some of these moves aren't the strongest. Um, but here, definitely, things are looking good. We've got some scary queen activity. And the white king is stuck in the center. All right, so not in the corner. It's in, it's in the lecture I prepared, though, so we can be guaranteed that there's a smothered mate idea in there. But let's just spend a little time thinking about what, what creates that, that possibility for him. Uh, we can all pretty much guess, even at this point, who, what's the general, the general, what, how's it going to end? How does this story end? Mate, right, yeah, and we're probably going to sack what on E1? We're probably going to sacrifice a piece on E1, right? Yeah. Which piece do you think? Um, on yeah, that's, that, that answer works for me. It's not, it's not untrue, some piece, yeah. Um, yeah, vague generalities uh, are a great tool. We don't have specific answers, um, yeah. OK, so white gets greedy here. He takes the pawn on d5, uh, where he should not have. He should have used that opportunity to create flight squares, develop minor pieces, as we just mentioned. But he got greedy, thought that the check might serve some purpose, even though he has no other pieces in play. He doesn't have any minors developed on the board to aid the queen. So just a simple bishop d7 ends ends that, and here he makes a critical blunder, right? Now I see some heads nodding in the audience, yeah. C3, or I, I think C3 might, maybe the D-pawn, you, you might also be able to create a flight square with a D-pawn, but uh, you need Luft, which is the German word for air, which is a common uh, chess term describing a flight square or an escape square for the king so as to avoid these kind of smothered mate ideas or corridor mate ideas or anything involving uh, restricted king movement and lack of safety because of that. Uh, so knight f3 allowed our thematic idea. I'm going to challenge you guys. How do we, how do we Force the mate here. Well, yeah. That's right. Gotta go to E1. Check. Yeah. Yeah. Often this is, you know, these are the moves that are. Once we're familiar with the pattern, they seem natural, and they're obviously the best moves to us. Uh, to anybody that's not familiar with these patterns, you know, it looks like you're hanging a knight until it's spelled out for you why. Uh, not, not in this case. Obviously, this is, this is a really good illustration of double check um, being used. And that's why he can't, he can't take the hanging knight, obviously. 
And then we sacrifice the queen, right? And the knight is forced to recapture because the knight on d3 protects the queen. So this guy has to take, the king can't take. And we deliver our thematic mate on f2. Okay, so as Ken West was pointing out, but Dennis, I never see these in any of my games. Um, does this, how is this even a applicable? It is, uh, it is something that you, we have examples of as recent as uh, 2000, and there are probably some, I'm sure there are some others that have cropped up in top level play since then, but we have a Grisha game uh, that will at, at the very least uh, make a puzzle out of. Um, but first we're gonna look at some more uh, accessible games. Um, some more accessible games from a favorite of mine, Paul Morphy. Yay. Yay, all right, you like the Morphy stuff. And I, actually, I know I, I've done the opera game with you before, right? We, didn't we, yeah, we worked on that downstairs once, yeah. Okay. So typical Morphy style, getting ready to castle. First of all, playing a gambit line, the king's gambit. Uh, also getting ready to castle kingside with this almost routine development of the knight to f3 and the bishop to c4. Uh, the knight f3, a crucial at attacking and defensive piece, and the bishop c4, as we know, aiming at that thematic weak f pawn. I'm going to skip through some of this because I think we might be getting pressed for time here, actually. All right, so a bunch of crazy moves were made. We got a super complicated position on the board. Exchange a few times on d4. Make the queen move. Creating the threat of discovered check. Knight takes c2. Would win the bishop if the king were to remain on g1. He moves to h1, avoiding the immediate threat, but putting him in the corner, a clue that the smothered mate attack is in the cards. Okay. So, as a challenge to the class, let's work this one out together, and it should, uh, you know, it may just may be mundane and simple. We've done so many related, but... Uh, I'm going to challenge you since you've been so engaged. Close. It comes in. But first we want to open the line for our queen. We want the queen working on the, the a7 g1 diagonal. So we capture the bishop. Queen recaptures. Now we play your move. Yes, but not yet. Yeah, you want to play that, but not yet. And then here, just as a word of practical advice, uh, you have to take this. You will survive if you take this. If you don't, you walk into the discovered check. And now, dazzle us. Make it, make it work. Make it work. Too easy. Boring. Okay. Knight h3. I have to du double check, right? I'm in check twice. Oh. I'm getting better at it. Okay. I'm in check twice. Got to move to the corner. The thematic sacrifice, the self smothering, and the game winning delivery of the smothered mate. I hope you guys enjoyed that at home. Hope you guys enjoyed it here. Next week, I don't know what we're going to cover. Maybe another thematic mate. Um, maybe some Morphe stuff, uh, but it'll definitely be tactical. Hit like, share, subscribe. See you guys next week. Thanks. Thank you.